waking up in the mornings and realizing that the aura that you create in the morning follows you throughout the day. You know, one pivotal lesson that I learned within my spiritual journey came from this book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy, right? And in the book, he talks about the night before you go to sleep, right? And when you rise in the, in the morning, the demarcation line between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind is at its thinnest. So whatever affirmation or suggestion that you give yourself actually resonates within your aura field, right? And so I started this affirmation, I am progressing, advancing spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, physically, financially, artistically, and socially in all ways. And over time, I realized that the affirmation was so embedded within my subconscious that I started acting out that affirmation within my daily experience. So spiritually, I started meditating every day. Emotionally, it was emotional intelligence. Every day, I, I began a habit of writing within my journal, right? Because we understand that emotional intelligence is social and self-awareness. So I was starting to develop and evolve myself on a self-awareness level. And then the more I became aware of myself, I became aware of others and my emotional intelligence, my EQ started to grow. Intellectual, I was reading books every day. I was reading your spiritual being, having a human experience. You know, I was reading, um, you know, The Ancient Secret of Flower of Life by, by uh, John Valo Melchizedek. I'm reading these different books and it's increasing my intellectual value. It goes into physical, you know? I realized that even as I exercised every day, that was also living at a, a invisible value system. Financial, I started working on my business. I started looking at what different streams of income, different streams of income, what it means. Artistic, I dance, paint, draw. Any of those creative aspects or that creative intelligence aspect of yourself that you develop is also lending itself to your value system. And then socially, because you understand that your net worth is your net worth. You, under, you also understand that for your children, right? You can't give them your net worth, but you can give them your network. You can give them that community. Everybody who is within this chat right now, we will all have children or already do have children. We understand that the information that we impart to them will help them create their realities. And if they have a support system around them, it will also give them that same foundation in which they can go and be confident to do what they do within their realities because they understand that there are reflections around them that resonate like-minded thoughts, like-minded actions, like-minded intentions, and like-minded beliefs. Right. So coming into this awareness, I said, okay, what does that mean? To have a value system now, to realize that my spiritual aura resonates with me throughout the day. I realized that I had a key to my own spiritual journey, my own manifestation, because I understood that manifestation could only come from persistence. For those who've read um, Think and Grow Rich, let me see a one if you've read Think and Grow Rich before. Think and Grow Rich or heard of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. While reading Think and Grow Rich, there was a chapter within the book called The Principle of Auto-Suggestion. And the principle of auto-suggestion is about influencing your subconscious mind. And it said that the major principle to influence the subconscious mind was emotionalized desire. But the most important aspect to me and the most important aspect to you within your journey is your consistency, that habit building, that perpetual moving forward, that perpetual rhythm, that perpetual vibration. You realizing that the ebbs and flows on the external level do not move that poor God of yourself, that internal reality that doesn't move, that observes the ebbs and flows. Right. I could only access that because within that book, it talked about the principle of persistence. 
It said that if you persist, you now have the key to access God in manifestation. That's what the key to the I am is. That's what the key to your dreams are, is that perpetual persistence. And for my entrepreneurs in here, it's an even more interesting reality when you realize this also has to do with sales. And I know when I say sales, a lot of people have this negative connotation of sales. You think a salesman, you think a sleazy salesman, snake salesman. There are these different connotations that comes to mind, but you understand that everybody sells because right now you are selling yourself to yourself. Think about that. You are selling your self image to yourself. How do you know who you are? You know who you are because you are doing the actions. You are being the being that shows you who you are. So I say I'm a spiritualist. I need to sell myself on the concept of being a spiritualist. So what do you do? You meditate, you burn the sage, you do the yoga. You go into different situa situations with this consciousness and awareness because you understand if I'm, I'm a spiritualist, then I have to overstand the situation. And when I say overstand the situation and not understand the situation, because there are three levels, understand, understand, and overstand. Overstanding is just realizing that this situation is a 360 structure. It is not a one dimensional structure. So I can look at this concepts from different angles of perception, right? As I'm looking at this concept from a 360 view and degree, I am acting within the belief of my own self as a spiritualist, which is selling myself on my own self image. I say I am someone strong, so I'm gonna sell myself on the reality of strength. You get it? So even when you're doing your affirmations, you are selling yourself on the concept of yourself. You are actually creating your belief system. You are creating your paradigm, right? So all this is, is a paradigm shift. This conversation, this design, if you're here right now in taking this value, this is not a coincidence. As Brother Love Chain says, this is a coincide ins. Because you realize, wait a second, coincidence is a random occurrence, but coincide is to go together. So when you say coincide ends, you realize that this is not a random occurrence. This is actually something that I created and designed in harmony with my purpose and intention. For example, if I'm in the shower and I thought about you five minutes ago and I come outside and see you and I say, that's a coincidence. You just gave away your power. In your mind, you said that's a random occurrence and you gave away your power of manifestation to the external, not the internal. But when you design your paradigm and your belief system in such a way, because words are powerful, and you say, wait a second, it's a coincide ence that I seen you five minutes after I thought about you in the shower. Wait a second, there are other harmonies and synchronicities that I see within my life that are quote unquote coincidences, what if they are all coincidences? What if me being in this moment and taking this information in this divine design, in this context, in this reality, in this metaverse, in this metaphysical state of being, in this moment and soul of gratitude, what if that is a coincide -ence? Then you begin to breathe. You take, you intake that breath and you realize, okay, the breath is consciousness. A calm falls over you because you realize that you are the life. You are the love. You are the beauty. You are the joy. You are the peace. And because you realize that you are the peace, now you can realize you are the whole. So you are at peace. Understand, understand, and overstand. When you realize that you are the peace, you realize you are the whole. The finger knows it is not just the finger. The finger knows that's the hand. The hand knows that's the forearm. The forearm knows, that's, knows that it's the arm. The arm knows that it's the torso, the head, the body, the organism but then I can put all the strength of this entire organism back into this one finger. 
So that's what the power of this community is. That's what the power of this moment is. You are in the presence of like-minded reflections and individuals. You know, it's interesting because we hail from New York. I, I hail from New York City, you know. Let me get a year if you're from New York, you know. Just throw that in the chat. <laughs> throw that lecture. Or if you want to come to New York, if you have new people, friends in New York, you have family in New York, let me see the electric balls. Let me see the electric balls. Let me see the heart. Let me see the crown. Let me see the target. Let me see the infinity symbol because New York ain't going nowhere. Right? <laughs> I came from the South. I grew up in the South. But then I realized I needed to be in New York because I said New York has more reflections of self that will be able to bolster my own quote unquote perception of myself. That's the power of community. That's the power of persistence. The world will move out your way when you say you are who you are. Think about anybody who has ever done anything, right? Think about Jay-Z, right? He said, I'm a rapper, right? World said, I don't believe you. He said, I'm a rapper. He started selling himself on the idea that he was a rapper. He's writing in the notebooks. He's saying his rhymes. He's spitting on beats. I'm a rapper. He's telling himself, I'm a rapper. I'm putting my actions behind that same belief. I'm shifting that paradigm. I'm a rapper. I'm a rapper. I'm not a hustler no more. I'm not a drug dealer no more. I'm not a nigga no more. I'm a rapper. I'm a rapper. I'm a rapper. I'm right. He's affirming to himself. He's selling himself on this idea. Boom, over and over. And he's doing it in an environment where there are other people who are also looking at him and saying, you know what? I think I believe him. I need to move out his way. Because he is so persistent in his belief of himself He is selling himself so hard on the idea of himself That if I don't move out the way of this manifestation This manifestation is going to roll over me Or it's going to flow through me Because I am So if I am then I know that he is So that reflection in itself Bolsters your own manifestation That is the power of community you have more reflections that can bolster your manifestation, your vibration, and your belief in your, yourself. Because once they say, you know what, your belief in yourself actually gives me the confidence to have belief in myself and to have faith. You inspire me. You don't motivate me. Someone says, you don't motivate me. You inspire me. Because you understand that to inspire is to inhale, is to inspirito, is to inspirit. So in this moment... Exhale. Inhale. Hold it. Experience. Inhale. Experience. So that's what you realize. That is what you realize consciousness is. Consciousness is your humanity. Do not release yourself from your emotions or hu your humanity. Even me, even in this moment stuttering, that is the beauty of being a person, of being a human. You're able to make mistakes and you're able to adapt to the situation. The foundation of your divinity is your humanity. So a lot of people just within the conscious community try to say, I just want to stay in my higher self. I just want to stay in my spirit. I just want to stay in this ultra realized, vibratized and energized state. But you have to realize that a lot of people are not within that state. They're still within their human. And so to relate to them, to inspire them, to inspire yourself, to reflect back to yourself. Sometimes you have to hone yourself back into that human so that you can have a stronger foundation into the divinity. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. You are not a spiritual being. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. So hear what I say when I said that. I didn't say that you are not God. I said that's your lowercase g. <laughs> Bless. It's it's a it's an amazing moment. It's an amazing moment of of realization and expansion and initiation and selection. What do you give your attention to? Because you sit and you realize, okay, my attention is my intention to attend. 
your attention is your intention to attend. And to attend is to give your consciousness to, is to give your awareness to, is to sell yourself to. Because you understand that every moment is your life force. Every moment is your time. You are living within the dash. You are living within that moment of the day that you were born and the day that you die. You are living that dash. You are living that awareness of yourself. That's why we breathe into these moments. That's why we inhale and we and we experience and we give gratitude and we make their stakes, mistakes and we adapt and we love and we sit in a powerful degree of light because we understand that this experience is all that we can know. Because we understand that knowledge is to know the lens. If you overstood that, understood that, understood that, if you did not hear me, but you are listening, let me get some fireballs in the chat. Fireballs, <laughs> fireballs. That's a combination of fireballs and the lightning bolts. Let me get some fireballs in the chat. Let me get some infinities in the chat because you understand that you are also a reciprocal, adaptive, infinite being within yourself. You understand that your infinity is what gives the consciousness for your finite self. You understand that you are an infinite being. That's why you are a finite being because the foundation of your finiteness is the infinity. It just keeps going and going and going. And every moment, every breath, you are living, inhaling, and you are dying in every breath. You are immortal in this moment. You are infinite in this moment. The conception of immortality is immortality itself. The idea of yourself becomes resonated into the universe and never escapes. You are always going through this cycle of love. You are always going through this cycle of light. You are always going through this cycle of realizing who you are within this context of this cosmic energy that we call matter. So when you tap into your ancestors, you understand that your ancestors, your ankh sisters, exist within this moment, exist within this matter, exist within this breath exist within this consciousness and they are looking out from behind your eyes proud of you and grateful that they able to give you your initiation your volition your energy your consciousness that they're able to lend themselves to your purpose to your journey he's doing it she's doing it they are doing it they are breathing they are knowing they are realizing, they are recognizing us. They are recognizing themselves. They are, re they are realizing that they are the culminated beauties of all of our prayers. So they live within this purpose. They tap into this community knowing that they're reflections of light. They tap into this information because they know that this information gives the foundation for knowledge, for know the ledge, and then that know the ledge creates the foundation for the wise dome, the wisdom. And that realization of your own wisdom makes you realize that nothing can surmount your awareness your intelligence, your energy, not any matrix or system. I am the geometry. I am the geo matrix. So no matrix can control me. I am the living tetrahedron. That system has to adapt to my energy, my consciousness, my belief. And actually, this actually correlates with one of, the, one of the questions that was asked last night on the live. One sister asks, one sister soul asks, do you believe in the evil eye bracelets? I thought that was an interesting question because I said that it 
it's not about if I believe in the evil eye bracelets. It's that belief, belief in the evil eye bracelets exist in itself. That's why the evil eye can manifest itself. It needs a community. It needs a pool of people to believe in it. Belief in something creates the manifestation. It creates that subjectivity into objectivity. Right? So when you look into that eye, when you look into that, remember, divinity is your level of attention, is your level of awareness, is your level of consciousness. So if enough people believe in the evil eye bracelets, it is. Because they're not believing in the evil eye bracelets, they're believing on the manifestation of the evil eye bracelets. That's just a conduit. Again, it just goes back into that concept of selling. They're selling themselves on the idea of the evil eye bracelets and what it does in the universe being a reality. And so it is. So they're just using a polaristic and distorted part of the power of manifestation, but it is. I love the intention. I love the, not only intentionality, but the intense tonality within this room because you understand there's a there's an urgency there's a need for information there's a need for something that's going to send you into this next journey within your life this next stage or dimension within your life because you understand that there are not only levels there are layers to this because your manifestation is spirituality which is a spiral reality a spiral duality So you're not only going levels, which connotates, you know, a up and down. You're also going layers, which connotates an in and an out. I always give a, a, I always give a visualization if you visualize, you know, uh, an aura field. An aura field is almost like an onion. It goes in all direction. It radiates out from you. It exudes out from you. Now it's not only radiating out, it's also radiating in. You are magnetizing and you are simultaneously attracting with your thoughts, with your ideas, with your energy and motion. The thoughts that are going on within your mind as you're listening to this live, you are realizing things. Your questions are coming to your mind, questions that you are not asking me, but you are asking yourself because you realize that a question is a quest in. And that as you ask the question, the confirmation from the reality will show you because your awareness creates this reality. So there will be a correspondence that will show you if you realize that it's not a coincidence, it is a coincidence. And you've arrived. And you've arrived. And you laugh and you feel that love and you feel that gratitude because you've arrived. The, the moment is perpetual. Your presence is your present essence. You're not trying to rush this ride, this journey. <laughs> you want to sit and enjoy it. That's what the joy is. That's what the beauty is. You want to feel your power. You want to feel your love. You want to feel your light. Which is to say, you don't want this journey to be easy. So you do want to make the mistakes. You want to make the mistakes and you want to know that you have the power to adapt and still be successful. You don't want this journey to be easy because you understand even within your own life, the things that you've gotten easy, you don't have a lot of value for. Anything that you've achieved that's been easy in your life, you don't, that did not bolster you. You don't have a lot of value for that. But the things that you pushed through and you had to go through that threshold, you look back and you say, yeah, you know what? I did that. I'm proud of myself. I That was the moment I felt my love for myself. That is the moment I felt that light for myself. That is the moment when I felt my beauty and I and I felt like I recognized my beauty. That's the moment when I felt like I recognized the power that's within me, that's coursing through my being, that I recognized the power of my mind. When I was able to look at that situation and alchemize that situation from a negative situation into a positive situation. Because I realized that the law of polarity is not a belief, it is a law. It is the universal law of polarity. So it's not based on my belief. And that's why the universal laws will be another key to your manifestation to another dimensional, omnidirectional, multi-dimensional level within your spiritual journey. 
the law of polarity. There's an out and an in. There's a hot and a cold. There's a life and a death. There's an inhale and an exhale. So you realize that corresponds infinitely in all directions. So with any negative situation or mistake that you've seen in your life or tribulation or situation, you understand that like the law of gravity, you don't choose. There's no belief. It just is. For example, what I love, I love the law of the law of gravity, right? You jump off a building, you don't have to believe in the law of gravity, but the law of gravity will show you that it is. The same way with the law of polarity. So you can rest on that foundation. So when you have a mistake within your life, right? A mistake, a situation, a problem, a tribulation, an objection, there is a polaristic side to that. There is an opportunity. There is a solution. There is an enlightenment. There is a lesson. There is a realization. There is a love on the other side of whatever you're experiencing. Because by the law of polarity, it must be so. So when you have that knowledge, when you have that information, when you have that wisdom, that wisdom, when you realize and you have arrived and you see this quote unquote negative situation within your reality, you understand the own power of your manifestation and your alchemization. You look at that, you activate the law of polarity in yourself. You use and trust and have that faith. And all of a sudden, your alchemy turns that problem into an opportunity, into a solution, into the next stage within your journey. You realize that what stands in the way is the way. What stands in your way is the pathway. The obstacle is showing you the next stage, the next thing that you have to do. That is how you alchemize the situation. That is who we are as a community. We are a successful people. We are an adaptive people. We have the Midas touch. Everything that we touch turns to gold. And you have to have that belief and foster that belief and sell yourself on that belief of yourself. This is an affirmation that I want everybody to say right, right now in this moment. And after you say this affirmation, I want to see a firebolt. I'm going to keep saying that firebolt. <laughs> we are going to combine the fire emoji and the lightning bolt emoji. That's the fire bolt. That's how I know your attention, your awareness, your consciousness is here with me in this moment. And so you say to yourself, I have the Midas touch. You believe it. I have the Midas touch. Say it again to yourself out loud. Close your eyes. Breathe. Inhale. Experience. Inhale. experience and say it loud I have the Midas touch everything that I touch everything that I see everything that I hear everything that I feel everything that I decide everything that I endeavor to do within my life and within this life force and within this state of gratitude it all turns to gold. Everything that you do turns to gold. I have the Midas touch. Now feeling that light within yourself, visualize your aura radiating out and visualize everything around you turning into gold. Think about Aladdin. That moment in Aladdin when he had the golden hand and everything that golden hand touched turned to gold. Think that you have that golden hand. Form your hand like that golden hand in Aladdin. And touch your leg. And watch your leg. Visualize your leg turning into gold. That gold coming down from your leg, going into the ground, going into your environment. Going into the problems within your life. Going into, into your, your traumas. Going into your moments when you feel like, you know, you don't have what it takes and see that golden hand turning whatever that force is, that concept of yourself is, visualize that turning into gold, shining, 
loving, light. It is something there. There's a lesson there. It is there for you to grow. It is there for you to progress. It is there because it wants you to be a successful person. Because you said, I need to, I want to be a successful person. What is a successful person? A successful person is a problem solving person. Every entrepreneur here knows that you are only an entrepreneur because you solve problems. So you invite problems within your life because you say, oh, I'm going to monetize that. <laughs> I'm going to turn that into gold. I'm going to solve that problem. I'm going to use the system that I use to solve that problem. And I'm going to give it to other people. And that is what's going to be the foundation for me being an entrepreneur. You know what? I'm in a state in my being right now within my spiritual journey when I don't know what to eat. I'm still trying to figure out what to eat. That's a problem that I have within my life. But I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to adapt. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to do the research, right? And then once I do the research and I get to that state of myself where I have this dietary routine and I know the things to put in my body, I understand that there are people who are just now getting into their spiritual journeys and they need that information. So I go and I create an ebook or I create a system or I create something and I or I just give it to them. I give them that knowledge because I understand that once they come back, they're going to take that knowledge that they learned. They're going to reciprocate that, magnify that and give that to other people who are also beginning their journeys. Your energy starts to magnify and your belief in your yourself begins to become a confidence because you feel invisibly intangibly that infinite energy lending itself to you you are feeding yourself through another law which is the law of circulation everything circulates breathe in breathe out that's the circulation. You can't stop the circulation. If you, even if you are not intentional about your breathing, you are still circulating. Right? And so a lot of people are asking themselves, how do I get more money? How do I get more love? How do I get more abundance? How do I get more expression? How do I get more creativity? How do I get more love? How do I get more being? How do I get more experience in my life? How do I get, how do I get, how do I get, how do I get, how do I get? No, you need to be asking yourself, how do I give? How do I give? Because the law of circulation means there's an in and out. So you're saying, how do I, I want something, but I'm not willing to give, right? You just want to get. This is what getting, people who have just that getting mindset. I want to, I want a million dollars, right? I want to get a million dollars. This is what that looks like. You have to hide, you breathe. Exhale. That's you trying to get and get and get you're going to get yourself to death you need to give you need to allow that to circulate you need to give how much money do you think you have if you give a million dollars see people are not living their potentials because their 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 paradigms have not shifted and they don't have any foundation in the universal laws of nature because if you're giving a million dollars, you're not going to give the entirety of your wealth. That's going to be at least 10% of your income. So you're saying, okay, you know what? Instead of getting a million dollars, if I get a million dollars, right? If I get a million, that's all I have. But then if I give a million dollars and if I allow that circulation to come through me, not to me, then all of a sudden I become this reciprocal being. I become this infinite being because I'm living from a law, not a belief. So I can rest on that foundation because people have different degrees and dimensions of awareness of self because so everybody believes something. Some people believe things that are not true, even though we all have our truths. So they make it true within their reality. That's why you have to stay a while away from people who have certain beliefs because they will make that belief true within their reality. If they believe that they are not an infinite and spiritual being. If they have a God concept where they think that God is something outside of them and they don't realize that they are low KG, sometimes that lack of belief and potential in themselves will go into you because they are living out that truth through you because they only realize themselves in relation to you. Think about that. You only know yourself in relation to the five people around you, to the people who are closest to around you. They only know themselves in relation to you. That's why it's so important for you to have a solid foundation in yourself because you realize that nobody knows you 360 except yourself. Your mother doesn't know you to her entirety. Your father doesn't know you to their entirety. Not your brother, not your friend. Because they see you as the son. They see you as a brother. They see you as a friend. 
They see you as the co-worker. They see you as the business owner. But you're an omnidirectional, multi-dimensional being. So you see yourself as the brother, as the son, as the co-worker, as an entrepreneur. You see yourself from that 360 degree context while they only see you from that 25% or 15% degree of self. So you realize you are that wholeness that you experience. So even when other people's opinions come into your life, you don't give them that much credit because you say, you only know me, you're only giving me an opinion from 15% of myself, not from the full context of myself. Shout out to Gary Vee. <laughs> context. You wanna have a full context of yourself. You are selling the 360 idea of yourself to yourself. So you want that self to rest on a solid foundation and that solid foundation is the universal law of polarity because you say, if the universal law of polarity, there's an in, there's an out. Let's say the out in is myself. What is the out? The out would have to be infinity. So this self can keep coming out circulatory, reciprocally on an infinite level, the more I'm aware of it. And I'm aware of it on a multi-dimensional level where we go back to that value system I learned in the beginning that can also lend itself to your reality as well. Called the Sutfas philosophy. That is the key to my own multidimensionality. It is my value system. Sutfas is S-E-I-P-F-A-S. That is spiritual, emotional, intellectual, physical, financial, artistic, social, growth, progression, and advancement. Even thinking about that and thinking about the actions that come with that every day. What if you had a key now to your own spiritual journey? What if you have a value system that's going to make you infinite because you can pursue these concepts infinitely. So that means you're infinitely growing spiritually. You're infinitely growing in your emotional intelligence. You're infinitely growing in your physicality and you're evolving in your dietary and you're in your exercise and other people are seeing you and they're seeing how clothes fit you and you're financially multiple streams of income coming in and you know people are you are giving other people the foundation to be more financially literate and then you're more artistic so you have this more creative intelligence and this creative intelligence is now asserting itself in your business and now you're problem solving because you understand that problem solving becomes from your imagination comes from that creative faculty and facility within yourself and then socially now you have reflections now you have a community that bolsters you that gives you inspiration not motivation that you can feel gratitude for because not everybody has somebody there that they can see within their own journey ask questions and understand and overstand that is actually a quest in